right, so it's a Monday morning, and I think I may have someone coming from a ways away to buy this gas tank today, so. All right, so the customer took the gas tank earlier today. He seemed to be pretty happy with it. He drove a long ways to get it. Anyway, I've got someone else who's interested in a broken down Kawasaki engine. I've got the backhoe warming up. It's starting to rain out here. I'd like to get the mower over here where I can get the tank, uh, where I can get the engine out of it. So we'll see if that happens or not. All right, here's the engine. I could not get it to turn over by hand, but I think he's interested in it for 150. And I want to keep the deck because that's a 48 inch deck and the transmission. So that's why I'm not just giving him the whole mower. So see if we can get this over to the shop somehow. I'm thinking put the backhoe right here somewhere and have the arm reaching in here, try to pull that out and then through here. All right, that ought to work. Oh, yeah. Perfect. See if that helped any. Those tires are pretty bad. All right, we've got it up here. Now we have to figure out what we're gonna do because the shop's full also. So let's see how we get this engine out of here. Probably the standard four bolts. And then the pulley. The shop is too full. I could pull it up right in here maybe get my floor jack under it or i could leave it out there and use straps and the backhoe and a loader to pick it up maybe just put some jack stands under it and then when i'm done i can lift the engine out using the front loader or backhoe which is another important factor okay let's just let's let's do it see how it goes <laughs> That's convenient. Just don't want to get under it like that. Yeah, I think we can get to what we need to get to from here. We just need to get some jack stands under there. It's going to settle a little bit on the deck, I know, but the deck is the best thing for me. We'll put them on right now. So let's let the boom down here, see what happens. All right, not much of anything. That's perfect. I probably want to go ahead and let the dipper get all the way out of the way because hydraulics can fail and I don't want this bucket falling on me any more than I want the mower falling on me. That's the wrong thing to do. That was my fault. Ouch. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. It was already broken right there, but that didn't help anything. Why did I do that? There we go. I will try to do my best to not be under there too long, and we'll get this thing out of here. Got the first two bolts out, but I have to take the deck off to get the rest of this out. The deck is totally in the way of taking out this bolt here and the rest of them. I have to get the deck off and uh, try to get it lifted up again. All right, well, we got the deck off there pretty easily. It wasn't too bad. I got the uh, PTO bolt 
out. That wasn't too hard. Then I got off these two back bolts up in there, the two back ones on the engine towards the driver. One of them was hard to get because the steering part was in the way and it was kind of frozen up. So it got rotated, got freed up a little bit and rotated out of the way. And now the pesky thing is the um, transmission drive pulley up there above the PTO. It's not coming off real easy. All right, so now it's Saturday morning and I really want to finish getting this engine out so I can uh, hopefully sell it to the guy. I'm thinking I'll probably drop the price a little bit. It's really close to coming out. It's just this one pulley up under there. It's kind of not wanting to come off. If that happens, it's spray penetrating oil on there. Keep tapping it, hitting it with a hammer, trying to get a pry bar under there to pry it off if we can. But um, after we get that one out, we've got another engine potentially selling. Remember this mower? I picked up this mower in the very first Garage Story video. It was like Memorial Day mower pickups, uh, probably at this, I think it was 2021. It says 20 horsepower here, and it says 17 and a half horsepower here. I used both horsepower figures in the video and I didn't even realize that, that they didn't match. 20 horsepower, 17.5 horse Briggs. I noticed that later. I think they swapped the engine on here. So this engine is not the original engine. But I've got somebody interested in this engine at, gosh, I can't remember. I think $175, $175. So what I want to do after I finish the other engine pull is take, take this mower over there, see if I can hook some jumper cables on there and see if I can get it to crank and spin over and maybe even see if it'll fire with some carb cleaner in there. That would be great. So then I can establish that it's a pretty decent engine. It's a runner, just needs a carb clean and stuff. That will probably be a little easier to pull. <sighs> I need to get back after it. Got to sell, sell parts and uh, do other stuff. I need to sell some mowers too, but probably not today. Okay, so visually, it's looking loose to me. I hammer it, it looks like it's jumping around, not just the engine moving, but it looks like it's jumping around. So it should be about ready to come off. Oh, it feels, I feel it moving up and down. But the key looks like it's frozen. Let's see if I can give the key a few taps. not sheared so that's a good sign. Is there something holding the key in? I might need to google this real quick. After googling it, it doesn't seem like there's any trick to it. I found one person who had a problem getting it off and then he was able to get it off and didn't mention any any oddities to it. So I think I just need to keep doing what I'm doing and hopefully it comes off. That's what I'm talking about. See, the back looks like a giant nut. No idea why. Man, that thing is on there. The key stayed in there. I think the key's frozen on. But we got it off, Woohoo! Now we can get this engine out of here. Man, this pulley was a booger to get out of there. Kind of beat it up pretty good, but I got it off. And, uh, well, hopefully it doesn't need the pulley because that's pretty much trash now. So we're pretty much done underneath the mower. The engine is free. And now you just need to drop it back down, get all the stuff cleaned out, and uh, disconnect any wiring that needs to be disconnected. And this engine should be nice and free. Fuel line's already broken, so just this wiring around here pretty much. And uh, this thing should be free. Unfortunately, it did seem like it was low on compression when I was turning it. Um, could be a compression release situation, so maybe, maybe that's actually pretty normal for rotating like that. I don't know. Yeah, we're almost there, and it's taken way too long. But that tends to be the way things go. Drop it down, try to pick this thing out, and uh, move on to something else.
there she be. I'll let the guy know that this engine is out. Maybe send him a couple pictures and see if he wants to come pick it up. Now I can move on to the next project. Watch die. I think we're out of gas. I think this engine's probably a decent engine, maybe messed up with the carburetor and stuff. Cause there's like a manual choke on here. Oh, that throttle's not hooked up. That's not good. The throttle slide is broken on there. I'm thinking to see if I can hook a battery up and get this thing to crank over. See if the oil is in there. Oh, there's definitely oil in there. And it looks pretty clean, so that's a good sign. Let's hook up a battery to it and see if it will crank over. All right, so we got the battery hooked up. This battery is actually not as old as I thought. When I picked up this mower, that battery was only a, a year or two old. So I got the parking brake on. It's a, huh, got a flicker from the headlights, I think. Headlights work. That's good. I think the dead battery is soaking up a lot of juice. It had like two volts in it. So I think I'm going to set the ignition to on and bring my jumpers over and pop the starter and see if it'll crank. Okay, that's a good sign. Engine cranks over, a little slow. Uh, it seems like it has compression and the starter works, so that's good. I think this is a good engine. All right, I'm running out of time today like usual. It seems to always happen, but I got the motor jack out here so I can hopefully jack this thing up a little safer than I was doing on the Kawasaki engine with the jack stands. Anyway, but it's not running and I need to get it up on here. So maybe I'll use the backhoe to get it up on here. Backhoe to the rescue. I think I sometimes underutilize that backhoe, but really, I work in the shop most of the time, so the back wheel can't fit in there very well. Now we can see what we're getting into. So it's in the safety lock right here, that's in. And I have one tire strapped on, the other one doesn't look like it's going anywhere, but this is cut underneath, so I can't put it on easily. Oh, this should be easy. I can see all the bolts, all four of them. And there's just the one in the middle. I don't think I even need to take the deck off to get this one off. Well, that was quick and easy, just the way it's supposed to be. Got the pulley off there, didn't even have to loosen the belts, so I was able to pry it off. Got all four bolts out. We are ready to rock and roll. Get everything out from under here and drop it down. All right, so the engine should now be loose. Okay, that engine's practically out now. The guy for that engine is supposed to be coming to meet me in about 10 to 20 minutes or so, so it's time to get this Load it up in the truck so I can go meet him.
All right, we're back. We got $120 for that engine, which I'm pretty happy with. I went down because ah, I wanted him to be happy. He wasn't super pushy or anything, but I honestly didn't know if the engine was any good. But a good running engine like that would be worth like, you know, five or $600 probably. Anyway, hopefully it works out for him. And let's see what else we can sell. All right, so I'm supposed to deliver this engine tonight. Not too far away. But I want to replace this thing on the side here first. It doesn't look good. I'm probably just going to unbolt it off the engine and uh, put another one on and go from there. Here's my parts engine right here. Yeah, I'll take that off. Nice and easy. And uh, I'm just unhook the governor spring. These do look pretty much the same, so that's a really good sign. Spring in here. I think we got that taken care of, at least hopefully. I may um, send him the original one also. Need to throw this in the truck and uh, go deliver it. Alright, got it strapped down against the tailgate. It's pretty tight. It's not really going anywhere. I have two straps doing the same thing. That's always the best way to do it. If you're gonna have two straps, make sure they do the same thing. No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't work out that way. Let's uh, go deliver it and hopefully, hopefully they pay what we agreed on. If I get what we agreed on, which is $175, I'll be happy. If he tries to talk me down, I probably won't be that happy, especially since I'm delivering it. But I do want the customers to be happy as well. So I'll check in with you when I get back and we'll see uh, see how it went. All right, we are back from dropping off that engine. It went pretty smoothly. I got paid, so that's always a good sign. Uh, yeah, got paid the full amount, $175. So I'm happy with that. I don't normally like to deliver stuff, but in this situation, it just seemed good to get the engine out of here. And 175 bucks is nothing to sneeze at. So hopefully he's happy with the engine and can make use of it and that it doesn't get returned. So over the last week or so, we sold a gas tank for $100. We sold another engine for $120. And then we just sold this one for $175. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with those three sales and we'll see if we get any more. It's kind of just the beginning of the season, but that's not a bad start. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Stay safe and keep making stories.